Unless you've been living under a rock, you know that the world is on the brink of a technological revolution. And that has many people worried because the thought of being replaced by AI is a terrifying prospect for those who once thought that their jobs and their future were secure. Among those people are photographers. They feel like their livelihood is threatened by the rise of AI and somewhat it is for a good reason. Mid-journey is a relatively new thing, new software. It is very controversial, but it, it doesn't really matter where you stand with or against. Everybody agrees on that the uh, images Midjourney and other software like it produces is nothing short of amazing. And it is getting better every day. I experimented with this Midjourney uh, a few months ago and uh, you know, even if I did see the prospect for it, I was underwhelmed, you know. It, it wasn't nice. It, everybody had like nine fingers and, it, you know, the faces were not, you know, it, it wasn't good. But now, the difference from a few months ago and now is just mind-blowing. But the question is, does this mean the end of photography like so many people are predicting? When I first started photography, we shot film. That was the only medium we had. We had film and we had darkroom or sending stuff to the developers. And uh, you know, I, I did some of the darkroom stuff and I just completely hated it. I did enjoy the shooting part, walking outside on the street or in the nature and shooting. I, I enjoyed that a lot and I still do. But, but the whole process of either waiting for my photos to be developed or doing it myself in a dark room. I just did not like that. But when digital camera emerged, it was, it was met with a heavy resistance from people, what we like to call now as, as traditionalists, traditional photographers that didn't want this change. They wanted things to remain the same. And they argued that the digital output would never match the quality of a film. And for a while, it was true. But then digital evolved. And digital photography evolved fast. Suddenly, anyone with a camera and a computer could create stunning images faster and cheaper than ever before. An editing tool like Photoshop just pushed the boundaries of what was possible and everyone loved it. Well, except the traditionalists. However, even if there was a lot of shift towards digital photography and, and, and that was the new trend, there were a lot of established photographers that managed to continue with what they were doing because they just had something that people wanted. Their style, the creativity and, 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 and some marketing savvy. So they managed to continue what they were doing. But the others who had really nothing special to offer and just clung on to their outdated practices, unwilling to accept any progress, they just looked like Smeagol obsessively holding on to their pressures while the world just moved on without them. Now with the rise of AI, we are facing similar crossroads. Although it's not quite the same as the shift from film to digital, AI represents a new technological frontier that can't be ignored. Progress will not be stopped just because it may lead to some job losses or it would disrupt the traditional ways of doing things. No, we need to adapt to these changes and ask ourselves how we can use this new technology to our advantage. The only way forward for most people is to find a way 
to adapt this and grow with it. You cannot fight this and expect to win. But despite the impressive progress of AI, there are certain types of photography that, that still cannot be replaced by AI, such as documentary photography, which tell real stories of real people and events. This aspect of photography has a social significance that cannot be replaced by technology. I don't think landscape photography is going anywhere either because there is so much more to landscape photography than the actual photo. And that's true for uh, any photography, I guess, because as Ansel Adams said, you don't make a photograph just with a camera. You bring to the act of photography all the pictures you ever seen, the books you read, the music you heard, the people you loved. But having said that, there is one type of landscape photography that, well, might become not outdated, but not as popular as it is today. Today it's hugely popular. Some photographers refer to it as modern landscape photography, while others considered it overprocessed and fake. This type of photography involves creating these large fantasy dramatic edits that is that are often extremely cool but unnatural. AI software like Midjourney excels of creating these fantasy edits to the point that it will outperform humans by a huge margin. Some people complain that AI photos look more like, like these ultra realistic paintings or 3D renders than photographs, but really they do, but, but still you just need to tone the prompt down. You need to relax on your demands towards what you're asking mid-journey to do because you can get so close to reality that it confuses people. People just do not know what is what. But you can also experiment with any type of art style. There is more to AI than a photorealistic photo. However, as a photographer, I will still use my camera for something that needs to be real. But I can imagine myself using AI to create things that are difficult or even impossible to capture with a camera. You know, like a, like a frog pondering at a table or a pigman. Because AI offers opportunities to explore the realm of fantasy and create something unique. Combining my photography with some fantasy world from AI from Midjourney is definitely something that I will experiment with. You know, will I monetize it or you know? I don't know. That doesn't really matter. It's fun. Sometimes fun is enough. Some people argue that using AI to create images is the equivalent of stealing other people's work or ideas. This is simply untrue. By understanding how AI constructs an image with a technology that is called stable diffusion, you, you will see that AI operates very similarly to a human mind when we draw or when we paint. Through massive amount of information we have or AI have, AI knows, for example, what a chair is. It understands what is considered a beautiful woman. It also understands ethnicity. So if I make a prompt in mid journey asking for a beautiful oriental woman in a traditional dress, sitting in a chair, in like a Ming dynasty environment, it will not find parts of other photos which are copyrighted and simply make a complete pause it like many people think, it creates a photo based on my prompts using the data it has access to. It starts with a box of pixel and then it looks at what it has and it, and it adds and subtracts pixel until it thinks it has what I want. The same way as we would paint a photo, we would add to it and 
paint over something until we think we have what we want. Sure, you can ask AI to do something in the style of some artist and it will. But humans also do that. This is nothing new. Now, it's simply accessible to more people. This is nothing new. If you want something very specific, Midjourney might not be able to do that because some things is just kind of out of your control still. But that's true now. I'm pretty sure that you will be able to create very advanced prompt in the near future, add photographs for reference, and the result is going to be amazing. AI will, in the end, outperform humans in just about anything, especially stuff like photo editing. It might take some time for it to learn, but it will get there. We thought that computers could never outperform our best and the brightest chess players in the world. But in 1996, I want to say, the Garry Kasparov played chess against Deep Blue, which was a supercomputer from IBM, I think it was. And, it, and, 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 and he won the computer, uh, the first match, he won. But the computer didn't care. Deep Blue didn't care. It didn't hurt her feelings. Deep Blue just used the information it gathered from that match. And Gary Kasparov never won again. Poker was another game that people thought that computer couldn't outperform a human because of the human element, bluffing and stuff like that. It took a while, but now a computer will outperform anybody in poker any day by a huge margin. When Kasparov lost to Deep Blue some 30 years ago, he predicted the end of chess. But now, 30 years later, chess is bigger and more popular than it has ever been. When digital cameras emerged, some people predicted the end of photography, at least quality photography. But now, some years later, everybody has a camera. Everybody is taking photo. photo for photography has never been more popular and it's never been better. The quality, the output has never been as good. It, it, it seems like we are not very good at predicting the future. But it is understandable to be, you know, somewhat concerned about this because a lot of things will change and a lot of people will lose the job. And I think at least at first there will be a lot of jobs this creates. And even, I, even if I do embrace this technology, I cannot help but being worried for like, for example, big tech, this will just, these are the owners of this technology and this will just make big tech even more powerful than it is today. And I fear like, like one day we will just be controlled by Microsoft or Google and that is a fucking terrifying prospect. But in the far future, I do believe that we don't need all these people. We, we cannot employ everybody because the, everything will be basically automatic and, and the speed of productions will be so fast that humans cannot compete with that. So I do believe that there will be a lot of unemployed people and we need to respond to that. And I think it will be in the form of like universal income that you will just get paid to be a citizen, which in some mind might be fine, but let th think about this. If you get paid from the government or somebody, and this is your only income, this is your only chance of an income, you better behave or else, well, you know where I'm getting with this. 
I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit out of scope of this video, but this is relevant. This is something we need to think about. And like I said earlier, this is not an option for you. You will need to adapt, not necessarily to photo making software, but AI in general, because if you don't adapt, you will just be obsolete. But back to photography. AI is not that. AI is not photography. Mid Journey does not compete with photographers because this is not photography. This is digital art. Photographers can utilize AI to help them to speed up their workflow, to, to get rid of, uh, to, you know, repetitive editing tasks, just overall improve the quality of their work. And this is a good thing. And the thing is, if you are using software like Photoshop or some image editing software, you're already using AI. So, you know, it's just gonna get better from here. Good photographers, creative people with, who get great ideas will always be in demand. And now we simply have a bigger toolbox to, to make these ideas come to life. But I'm gonna leave you with this. I asked AI Midjourney how AI will look in 2050. And it came up with that. Then I asked AI or Midjourney what it thinks a modern city will look like in 2050 and Mid Journey gave me this. Now that's creepy shit. If you reach the end of this video, you are amazing and I love you. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.